Okay, let's challenge ourselves on this warm-up. Your friend says that there is an angle whose measure is the same as the measure of the sum of its supplement and its complement. Is your friend correct? If so, what is the measure of the angle? What I feel like this warm-up is teaching you to do is to translate math or English to math language. We are going to be translators. Are you ready to translate? Here we go. Your friend says that there is an angle. Let's stop there. There is an angle. First of all, that angle doesn't have a name yet. And in math, we need things to have names so we can talk about them. Let's name the angle. Your name is X. Now, I'm not naming it like angle X. I'm just naming its measure. We're about to get that. Whose measure is... Okay, measure now means that this is a number. This is not the name of the angle. This is his measure. Measure means... How much is an angle opening up? What is the degree or the radians? But we'll learn about that later. Um, whose measure is the same? Stop right there. What does it mean when it says is the same? Congruent, but we have numbers, don't you? Good. So we have an angle whose measure is the same. We're just translating word by word. It's so fun. It's the same as the measure of the sum. Stop right there. Stop right there. What does sum mean? Oh my goodness. Cool. Of its supplement. Stop right there. Let's write, if my angle is X, what is the supplement of my angle? Let's name it. Good. If my angle is X, the supplement of that angle is 180 minus X. Very good. The sum of its supplement and its complement. Wow. We just put that sentence into math language. Fun. Okay, let's combine like terms. X equals, let's combine this and this, 270. Let's combine this and this. You can do plus negative 2x, or you can just do minus 2x. Everyone okay with my algebra that we're doing here? Add 2x to both sides. You can achieve so much just by turning words into a math problem. So cool. Does the angle exist? Yes. Yes, it does. And what is the measure? Let's check our answer. Your friend says there's this mystery angle whose degree, whose measure, is equal to the sum of, what's the complement of 90, by the way? Zero. What's the supplement of 90? Is that a true statement right there? Does 90 equal 0 plus 90? Ding, ding, ding. Yay! Okay. You can title your notes Angle Addition and Angle Bisector. This is really just going to be a review. Because angle addition is really the same thing as segment addition from our past unit. And angle bisector is very similar in the way that we solve to midpoint from last unit. So if you could do midpoint, you can do angle bisector. If you could do part plus part equals whole, segment addition, you can do angle addition. Um, so just trying to show the parallel. Last unit, go back to last unit, ready? Do, 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 do. Okay, now we're in last unit. It's like two weeks ago. Yeah. And um, we learned a second edition postulate. That's what it was called technically. If three points A, B, and C are collinear, with B between A and C, then we found out every time something happens, the length of this segment plus the length of this segment equals the length of this segment. And we called it segment addition, and we nicknamed it part plus part equals whole. Well, the same thing is true for angle. There's going to be an if and a then. But we're going to look at an angle measure 
being added to another angle measure, and then equaling the whole angle measure. So green and blue are the part and the part, and the red is the whole. So that's our angle addition for this unit. Go ahead and write down the title and start off the postulate, and then we're going to end it together. All right, if point B is in the interior of AOC, so that's our hypothesis. We have an angle, it's called AOC, and point B is somewhere inside the angle. Did we say it was in the middle? No. We just said it's somewhere in the interior. So really, we could put this anywhere we feel like. If B is in the interior of AOC, then we're going to finish our sentence. To finish our sentence, I want you to connect O to B. Now we're going to write a statement. Then we can conclude the measure of angle AOC, oops, not that one, the measure of angle AOB plus, what do you want to say next? You got it. The measure of angle BOC, BOC equals the measure of angle AOC. Literally translated to part plus part equals whole. And that's what the angle addition postulate said. And that was on your homework last night, actually. On the back of your homework, right? Okay, so let's try a few. I'm not worried about you writing all of this down in your notes and solving everything. I'm worried about can we set these up correctly? Then you can show me you can solve it in your homework, okay? AOB is 17X. So what I do when I'm given a problem like this is I first put the angle measures on the picture and I put them inside the angle they go to. I don't put it off to the side. I put 17X inside the angle. BOC is 7X plus 6. And AOC, I recommend you show like this. AOC is 150. I recommend that you draw the whole opening of angle AOC to show what's 150. All right, so now we're going to use the angle addition postulate. This is now old news. Part plus part equals whole. This is now like, okay, riding a bike, we totally got this. 24x plus 6 equals 150. 24x, we're subtracting 6 from both sides, equals 144. Divided by 24. Beautiful. It didn't ask us to plug it in, so we're done. Very good. Measure of AOC. Oh, look what they did there. They gave us the whole first. So be careful. They might not always list the part and then the part and then the whole in order. They might not list it. AOB is 35 and BOC is 6X. Remember, in problems like this, if you don't see the word bisect, B is not in the middle. It, it is. Those are two parts, but they are not necessarily equal parts. Okay, we'll do our usual. Part plus part equals whole. And I notice we have a quadratic on our hands. So we're going to move everything over to one side. So I'm going to have 0 equals, let's see, we've got x squared minus 6x. Looks like minus 40 if I take the negative 5 and minus 35. I know. Okay, so we're going to factor that. We need things that multiply to get 40. 4 and 10, 5 and 8. We need to choose the pair that we can make a 6 out of. Can't make a 6 out of a 5 and an 8, but I sure can make a 6 out of a 4 and a 10. Now we need it to be a negative 6, not any old 6. It needs to be a negative 6. So we actually want our larger number to be negative. We want it to overpower the other one. Negative 10 plus 4. And this, of course, equals 0. So our solutions are 10 and negative 4. But we have to make sure they both make sense. Does 10 make sense? 10 squared minus 5 
So it would be a 95 degree angle. That, that makes sense. I like that. Does negative 4 make sense? You can plug negative 4 in here, which is kind of the scary part. It makes sense when we plug it in there. But when you plug negative 4 in here, we have a problem. An angle that's negative 24 degrees, that's actually not allowed. So we throw that one out, and although this one could have had two answers, it only has one answer. <laughs> okay. A carpenter, let me make that larger, I know that font is small. A carpenter is building a rectangular bookcase with diagonal braces across the back as shown. The carpenter shows that ABC is a right angle. Bookcases should be built with right angles, right? Okay. Then the carpenter knows that ABC, I'm going to put a little one in that, a, B, oh, A, C is a right angle. B, D, C. Angle 1 is 32 degrees greater than A, B, D. So he knows angle 1 is 32 degrees more than angle 2, but he wants to find the measure of the angle. So when we know something like that, we want to name the smallest thing X. Which one's smaller? Angle 1 or angle 2? He knows angle 1 is 32 degrees angle, 32 degrees greater than angle 2. Okay, so angle 2 is the smallest, so we call it x. Well, if we call angle 2 x, what do you want to call angle 1? No, read the problem. There we go. We want to use the same variable to flying paper because we want to make sure that we have an equation that's solvable. You can't solve a single equation that has two variables. So, now we're going to use angle addition. Part plus part equals whole. Cool. 2x plus 32 equals 90. So, 90 minus 32 divided by 2. 29 degrees. So, one of them is 29 degrees. And the other one is 61 degrees. Okay, moving on. Good job. Angle bisector is our other word of the day. An angle bisector is a ray. It's not a point. It's not a line. It's not a segment. An angle bisector is a ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles. Now, this is not a postulate. This is not a theorem. This is actually just a definition. So this is already on your vocab sheet. You don't need to be worried about writing this down. But remember, I want to compare and liken this to midpoint. So we're going to do that on the next slide. When you have an angle bisector, if this is a confirmed angle bisector, you can add R to your picture, indicating those angles are identical twins. They're equal. Then I'm showing in my picture that they're both 47 degrees, and I just made that number up. Okay. Let's see how an angle bisector compares to a midpoint, and then compare it to angle addition as well. Okay. Look at my three pictures, and I don't want you to solve a single one of them. I want you to think, how would I set up each one? I'm going to give you 10 seconds with no talking. Okay. Let's start with the first one. You're given that problem. Yes, it's an easy problem. They'll be more complicated, but how would you set it up? <laughs> Good. You wouldn't add those. You would set them equal. And the reason we're allowed is because of these arc marks right here. Sometimes sounds like a seal. Arc, mark, arc, mark. Arc, mark, arc. arc. Okay, anyway. 27 equals 3x. You set them equal just like you would have if you had had this. You wouldn't have added those. You would have set them equal. Same process. Okay, second one. Remember, this is the one where you have options. You have a half and you have a whole. So you can double the half or half the whole. So you can either say 6x equals 54 because I know 3 plus 3 part plus part equals whole. 3 plus 3 is 6. Or you can take that whole and you can bisect it. I know that 54 divided by 2 is 27. You can go from there. 
It's the hot, cold dilemma one. Okay? This one, you are not going to set equal because those arc marks are gone. They're not there. See? They're here. They're here. Oh my goodness, they're missing here. So this is not an angle bisector problem. This is an angle addition problem. Angle addition. Okay. I want to skip over the boring algebra one. I want to do this one and then we're done for the day and y'all can retake your quizzes. Okay? The figure shows a map of five streets that meet at Concord Circle. The measure of the angle formed by Melville Road and Emerson Avenue is 118 degrees. Check. The measure of the angle formed by Emerson Avenue and Thoreau Street, hopefully I'm saying these right, is 134. Hawthorne Lane bisects the angle formed by Melville Road and Emerson Avenue. Bisects, arc marks cut in half. Dickinson Drive bisects the angle formed by Emerson and Thoreau. I've already used one arc, so now I need to use double arcs. What is the measure of the angle formed by Hawthorne Lane and Dickinson Drive. Easy problem. So could you do that on a quiz or an assessment? This problem mathematically is not hard, right? It was just labeling the pictures and figuring out where the markings go. Yep, half both of them, and then add them together, right? What do you get? Let's bisect 118. Let's bisect 134. You get 59, you get 67, and so it's just the sum of those two, 126. Right. So I like the problems that kind of make you think a little bit more and aren't just part plus part equals whole and let's solve for x every time. Okay, start on your homework.